Welcome back learners. In today's video, we will be discussing the second abiotic component in our environment and that is the edaphic factors. Now, when we speak about edaphic factors, we are referring to all those factors that have something to do with soil characteristics, okay? Now children, soil is the basis of our food production as we need fertile soil in order to grow our crops for food production, okay? And it's also a very important natural resource and we should be protecting it and we should be conserving it. Now, we need to understand and investigate a number of soil characteristics in order to understand the role and the influence of soil in our ecosystem. In this video, we will be highlighting the type of soil or the texture. We will be looking at the soil air content, water holding capacity, the humus content in the soil, as well as soil pH. Let's begin with the type of soil or texture. When we speak about soil texture, what am I speaking about? Yes, soil texture refers to how fine the soil is or how coarse or rough the soil is. That's what texture is. To begin, we need to understand that there are three types of soil. We get sandy soil, loam soil and clay soil. Clay soil consists of very tiny soil particles. If we take a look at loam, you will see that loam is slightly bigger, right? So loam has slightly bigger particles while the sandy soil is much coarser and consists of larger particles. Let's move on to soil air content. Now some spaces between the soil particles are filled with water while other spaces are filled with air, which is very important for the survival of our soil organisms. If we look at our sandy soil, you will notice that there are bigger spaces between the soil particles and it is very, very well aerated. Now, aerated soil is very good soil because it allows the air to have a good flow through the soil particles, okay? And this is very, very important because it allows water to pass through very, very nicely. It allows the oxygen and the carbon dioxide between the soil particles and the atmosphere to be exchanged, right? So that there's always enough oxygen in the soil. Oxygen is very important for the respiration of our roots and it's also very important for the microorganisms that are present in the soil. In sandy soil, there are bigger spaces between the soil particles, right? And you'll find that it's very, very well aerated. While clay, on the other hand, has very small spaces and it's very, very poorly aerated. Now let's look at the soil's water holding capacity. Now, what is water holding capacity? Well, it's something that all farmers should know if they want to make sure that their crops are growing properly. What does water holding capacity mean? Well, it is the amount of water that any soil is able to hold so that the crop can use it. The more a type of soil can hold, the better for the crops to grow. Why is it so important for the farmers to understand about water holding capacity of soil? So that he does not need to irrigate or even suffer from a drought. Now, if we look at sandy soil, right, you will notice that there's lots of large air spaces between the soil particles. So, because it has large air spaces between its particles, we say that sandy soil has a very low water holding capacity. 
And this means that the water quickly filters through the sandy soil, taking along all the lovely, valuable nutrients with it. And what is this process called? Yes, it's called leaching. If we look at clay, right? You will notice that there's tiny spaces between the soil particles of clay and it has a high water holding capacity. What does that mean? It means that the drainage of clay is poor and plant roots will be able to rot more easily. But if we look at loam, we say that he is the most suitable type of soil for plant growth. Why do you ask? Well, loam has a medium water holding capacity, right? Meaning it's well aerated and it contains sufficient nutrients. Now let's look at the humus content of soil. What is humus? Humus is decayed plant and animal matter. So the decaying remains of plants and animals together with excretions of the animals like the feces and the urine, right? Together they form humus. And this is important because it increases the fertility of the soil. But children, it doesn't just increase the fertility of the soil, it also helps with the water retention or the water holding capacity of soil. Let's move on. So farmers know that the more humus they add to soil, the greater the water holding capacity of the soil. Now let's talk about soil pH. pH, what is pH? Now pH refers to the acidity or alkalinity, how acidic or how alkaline a substance is, in this case soil, right? How acidic or how alkaline the soil is and how is it measured? It's measured in pH units using a pH scale. Now a pH scale normally runs from 0 to 14. A pH of 7 indicates that the soil is neutral. Right? As numbers decrease from 7, the acidity gets higher. And as numbers increase from 7, so does the alkalinity. Right? Now, soils generally range from an extremely acidic pH of 3 to a very alkaline pH of 10. Okay? Some plants like azaleas and proteas, they grow better in acidic soil, right, where the pH levels are lower. But succulent plants grow better in alkaline soil where the pH levels are high. But most plants grow well in a neutral soil with a pH of 7. We must remember that in high rainfall regions, right, you will find that there's sandy soil there. Nutrients are going to be leached and the soil there becomes very, very acidic.